Crow's hat. <laughs> Why? <laughs> it's an awesome hat, dude. Uh, thanks, man. <laughs> I think the the true reason. Normally, sometimes I wear it out a decent day, but why why I wear it during the video chats is because the background doesn't cut well around my hair. So if I have my oh no, it's a bit squash, so it's cut. You know how is the cut out thing? Yeah, yeah. It's a little bit funny. So like, just just be happy that you've got that head. much hair. You know, like I'm losing <laughs> mine now. You you do. Know? I'm an old man. I got, I got gray, uh, gray yeah. chinny chins and, and my hair's going on the top. I'm going to be a grandpa next month, mate. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. fabulous. Congratulations. Yeah. That's fantastic. Oh, congratulations, Jeremy. <laughs> yeah. so, You're um, a big at a, such a young age. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my, my son, you know, like he's, he's only 20 years younger than me. Um, so, well, you, you, you may remember him from, from various Bali trips, but he's, he's about a head taller than me. He's very tall. Um, but, yeah, he's, he's gotten married and he, he spent six months travelling in Japan with his, with his new wife. And they've come back to Australia and bought a house and having a baby. So, doing all the, all the grown-up things. Fantastic. Well done. <laughs> uh, hi, Jenny. Welcome. Hi, oh, Jenny. How are you? Look at that. She's, she was in the office a second ago, then she was... She was in what's out San Francisco, now she's out in the forest. <laughs> having fun with the having fun with the backgrounds. So yes, that's my news. I'm gonna be a grandpa. I'm old. Andre's got the best hair. Well at least it's different than mine. Um, so what what questions do you have, mate? Because you weren't here last week. So it was me? Yeah. We, uh, we, we missed your questions last week, so you get to answer. You get to ask two questions this week. Ah, <laughs> oh, questions. What is it important to? How to know? When I'm not a trader, I want to invest long term. Is it important to know when to invest? Or in a big theme of things, it's, uh, it's going to be relevant in a, in a big picture. Um, I, I can or, only give you my opinion. And as, as long as you're buying good quality projects, and you know, if you say that you're investing long term, then I'm, I'm assuming you're buying good quality projects. And I, I, I would say to you, like if, if your family was a stock buying family, like your grandpa could have bought shares in Qantas 100 years ago, or could have bought shares in BHP 150 years ago. Was it a good buy then? Hell yeah, it was. And even mm. though there's been plane crashes and there's been mining disasters and there's been world wars and things like that, so the prices are going up and down. But 150 years ago was the best time to buy because it was super cheap. But then 100 years ago was a good time to buy. 50 years ago was a great time to buy. 20 years ago was a good time to buy. So if you're buying a good solid project, then of course, like now is the best time to buy. Tomorrow is the second best time to buy, you know? Mm. So, and I mean, if, if you think that the price is high now, some people go, oh, I'll wait for it to drop down. And of course it never does, um, unless you buy in and then the next day it drops down. But you can dollar cost average and say, instead of putting in $50,000 all at once, I'll put in $1,000 today and $1,000 the next day and $1,000 the next day. And if the market's going down, you're buying coins that are cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. As long as you believe that they're going to go up because it's a good long-term one that you've done your homework on. Um, or you could put in that 10,000 this week, 10,000 next week, 10,000 the next week, whatever. You know, I've, I've set up one of my wallets so it just buys $10 worth of Bitcoin every day. You know, because some people would go out and get a coffee and a croissant and that's 10 bucks, right? Like that's something they would do every day. So I just buy $10 worth of Bitcoin every day. And some days, you know, Bitcoin's really expensive and I only buy a tiny little bit. And some days Bitcoin is super cheap and I get a bigger bit. But on the swings and roundabouts, yeah. it works out. Over time. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, it's, it's entirely up to you. But if you've done your homework and you've followed the four-step coin protocol or whatever, you know, whatever 
template that you use to choose your investments, then just get in. So, in long, long term buy and hold, the, the timing doesn't matter so much. Um, mm. You know, there's, there's plenty of people out there going, oh, I bought Bitcoin at 15,000. Well, good for you. You know, I, I bought some at 15,000. I also bought some at 20,000. I also bought some at 40,000. I bought some at 50,000. But by the time it's like 250,000, I won't really care. You know, and that's yeah. the long term that I'm, that I'm holding and heading for. And there's plenty of analysts out there and some of these billion dollar um, financial companies who are buying in they're saying we're going to look to when it's 500,000. You know, that's what their, their forecasts and their modelling and their, their things say. Obviously helped along by the fact that the world governments are just printing, you know, trillions and trillions of dollars in paper money. Yeah, so that's it. There's no, there's no perfect time. It's whenever you feel the time is right. And then get in, stick to your guns and keep going. So, does that Thank help? You. Yep, that's just my view. I'm I'm a long-term buy and hold investor from from way back in my my stock market days. So, Makes sense. Jen, Jenny's muted herself, and Miliani's muted them herself. So, I'm I'm taking the girls that don't have any questions. <laughs> yeah, sorry because my house is full of children, so it's really noisy here. <laughs> do, do you have a question, though, Molly? Uh, I not yet because I haven't done my own homework with the Indonesia exchange. Yeah. As you know, the Indonesia exchange doesn't have many reviews, so we need to do our own homework. So yeah. choose which one uh, is the most secure exchange. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know. Be, being like when, when I was in Bali, I, I couldn't get onto certain websites. Like I couldn't get onto Reddit. I couldn't get onto Vimeo. A few websites I couldn't go on to. Um, if you go to, I think it's protonmail.com, find wherever Proton Mail exists. It's like Hotmail or Gmail. You can set up yeah. a free a free Proton Mail account. Um, yes. Yeah. And it's, it's a secure email. It's it's kind of like WhatsApp is a more secure version of text message. So you get the free Proton Mail account. Once you've got a free Proton Mail account, then you can get the Proton VPN. Um, yeah. You can actually get it for your phone as well as your computer. So I've got it on here. I'll show you my little thing there. You can see Proton VPN up near my camera. Yeah. Uh, yep. And I can press that and then it'll say, where do you want to connect to? So I can be connected in United States, Netherlands or Japan. Right? Okay. The, okay. Free, the free version gives me the choice of those three countries. Um, if you want to pay a little bit more, you can pretend that you're in Brazil or you can pretend you're in Russia or whatever you like. Um, so for, if, there's, if there's sites that block Australia, like I can't listen to the latest, you know, Beyonce YouTube while I'm in Australia, I can click on Proton VPN and tell the, the internet that I'm in America. And then I can watch the yeah. American things. I can watch American Netflix instead of Australian Netflix on my account. Um, but then when I go to an exchange, sometimes the, US, the, the exchanges in China, like Binance and these sort of things, OKX, they say, oh, you can't use this site if you're a US citizen. So then I go, oh, okay, well, suddenly I'm a Japanese citizen and I can use that. And that's, that's free, free VPN. That's fantastic. Yeah, I will try, try. Uh, yep. And I have a question. And I hope they will receive my Indonesian ID. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, who, who knows? You could be an Indonesian person who just happens to be sitting in Japan right now or in the Netherlands. You know? Yeah, it's very great. Great to know. Thank so, you. Give it a try. See what happens. <laughs> okay, we'll let you know how is, how is the outcome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jen, Jenny's smiling and saying that's probably not a good strategy, but hey, it works. You've got to do what you've got to do. <laughs> Hi Jenny, how are you? <laughs> Good thanks, Miliani. How are you? Oh my gosh. Time, oh. You know, uh, yeah, you can see my background a lot of <laughs> a lot of people. Here. Sounds like a happy household, Miliani. Uh, actually, I have a uh, friends who come by and a lot of children here. That's why I need to. Stop my video and mute it. 
<laughs> you have to mute the, the, the children and Jenny has to mute the dogs. So it's all good. <laughs> okay. Um, Great to see you. And Andre's got to mute the sound of how awesome his hat is. <laughs> is good, Jenny? So what, what's your question, Jenny, while you're there? Oh, you've caught me on the hop. Um, yeah, that's my dad. <laughs> um, gosh, I'm thinking about all of the different um, the different things that have added benefits to it. Like there's there's you know kind of coin and there's CRO. Like, what's your favourite one or two? that have, you know, kind of it's a crypto and it's a good one, but it's got a bit of added extra that, that might win me over. That's a really good question. That's a really good question. Because um, I've, I've have been... Have I stuck you? No, 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 not at all. It's a great question, though, because not a lot of people ask that. Um, I, I've probably got about 12 different crypto wallets because um, I've been in for a long time and, and the early ones were really hard to use and there's no support network you can't email them if you've lost your password you've lost your crypto that's it um and then there's other ones that do have tech support and you have got a phone number that you can call but they're more expensive and that's okay uh, because you're kind of paying for a bank-like service like if you have a problem if you forget your password you can email them and they'll contact you or you can call them um, so i i kind of like a combination of different ones but probably my favorite one that i use every day would be the Coinbase, because I, I set up Coinbase to just buy $10 of, worth of Bitcoin every day. Um, and then the other one I use every day is the crypto.com credit card. So I went out for lunch today and I was with a, a potential client, business partner guy, and he's like, oh, I'll pay for lunch, I'll pay for lunch. And I said, no, 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 let me, and I took out my crypto card and tapped it. And he's like, oh, your card's got a dog on it because it's got the Boston coin logo. And I said, yeah, and I pass it to him. And he goes, oh, and it's metal. And I said, yeah. And he's like, that's a really cool card. I said, thanks. And then like within two seconds of me paying for the, for the lunch, I showed him what popped up on my phone was a little thing that said, bing, you just spent $46 on lunch and you got paid $1.50 cash back in crypto. And he's like, whoa, that's really cool. Every time you spend $50, you get $1.50 back in crypto. And I said, yeah, free crypto every single time I spend anywhere that accepts a Visa card. So like that's, that's got to be my favourite because for people who go, oh, I want to buy crypto, but I don't know which one, or I want to buy crypto, but it's too expensive, or I want to buy crypto, like how about free crypto? <laughs> free crypto every time you buy petrol, every time you buy food, every time you buy clothes, bang, free crypto every single time. And, you know, if it turns out to be a dodgy crypto and disappears, who cares? Because it was free, right? So, yeah, I, I also like the... Um, What's the other one? Blockchain.com. Um, because that's a great place where you can actually buy crypto at exchange prices instead of paying, I think CoinSpot charges like 1% or 2% fee. Uh, Coinbase charges like up to 3% fee. Um, so blockchain will allow you to buy essentially fee-free, which is whatever their exchange average is. Um, they do charge you 3% if you're using your credit card but you can pay through cash, you can buy crypto at real prices and you can actually put it in like a term deposit. So I can put it in for 30 days and earn 6% interest or put it in for 90 days and earn 7.5% interest and that sort of stuff. So it's becoming more bank-like, which is really cool. If you have a term deposit, you can borrow against your crypto without actually cashing in your crypto and you can use it like a Visa card, then it's becoming much more user-friendly than what it used to be back in the early days mm -hmm. where you had a little password protected wallet and you could only send to people who actually had a Bitcoin wallet. So yeah, great question. Thank you. Which has probably brought up three other questions from Lily and Andre. No, not at all. Okay. Maybe just a uh, quick one. You shared a few tips uh, uh, about apps. Any other apps that you recommend? I know you get about 20 or 50 or whatever wallets, <laughs> exchanges, but uh, uh, apps that you sort of like and I pick up the bunch. Yeah, I, I think like if, you, if you're first getting into crypto, 
um, I would I would recommend um, Coinbase because it's the simplest, it's the mm. easiest to use. You know, like if you lose your password, if you forget your email, if you drop your phone down the toilet and you need to go and buy a new phone, there's someone there who you can contact and they can help you through it. There's only about 10 coins that you can buy, so you can't get too confused. They only list the top quality ones, so there's no rubbish on there. Um, it's just a very, very simple kind of way of getting into crypto. It's kind of like crypto kindergarten, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, so and then Coinbase that, as in uh, exchange. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, Coinbase. Coinbase as in exchange. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you have the app on your phone. And as I say, you can, yeah. you can jump in and go, I want to buy $50 worth of Bitcoin or $10 worth of Ethereum. Or you can set it up to buy a little bit every day, like a dollar a day or $10 Procuring. a day or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and you can rebalance between those. So you say, look, I've, I've got too much Bitcoin. I want to swap some of my Bitcoin and turn it into Ethereum or turn it into Polkadot or something like that. You can do that inside the app. It's very simple. It's kind of like a little box with 10 choices and you can't screw it up too badly. Once you've been on that for a while, then you might, you know, you make some crypto friends and they talk to you about, oh, I've heard of this new coin. It's called Jesus coin or Theta coin or, you know, X, Y, Z. And it's not on Coinbase. So that's where you might have to open another wallet or open another exchange, which are sure. more complicated. But hopefully by that time, if you've been on, on the Coinbase one for three or four months, you've got a bit of a handle on it and you know what you're doing. And that's when you can go, you know, move from, from crypto kindergarten up to first class or second class yeah. or something like yeah. that. Yeah. So once you've been in it for a while. But I mean, as, as I say, the, the idea of having crypto that you can use in the real world, so having that little tap and go Visa card is fantastic. You know? That's brilliant, yeah. That's, uh, mm, all right. I'll definitely go Three percent back on every purchase. So every time you spend a hundred bucks, you get $3 back in free crypto. Um, but a hundred percent back on Spotify and a hundred percent back on Net Netflix. So uh, that's, that's for the thirty dollars a month. The, yeah, that's for the blue one. So basically, you'd have to put uh, put in ten grand. Is it? Uh, I mean, with the, with current. Uh, uh, yeah. Now I think uh, they are taking five. Yeah, they, they keep. I think it's it. a fifty thousand or five hundred. Yeah, it, it shouldn't be that much. It might be five hundred thousand coins, um, but the coins are only worth about ten cents. Um, now they are they, 20. I was just, I was looking yeah, at it. So, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, when, when I staked it, I think it was like $300 to get into the first level. Um, and then oh, it was right. two and a half thousand to get to the next one. So I, I used the, the basic card for about probably four or five months. And then I upgraded to the next one. Um, okay. So it's while, easy to upgrade. Yeah. Yeah. While, while you've got that okay. money, you know, it's not like you pay them $2,000 to get a credit card. Because sure, that sure. money is yours. It sits on the exchange and you earn interest on that as well. So as, as you said, like the coin's gone up in value from 10 cents to 20 cents. Well, guess what? That's your money. If you've doubled your yeah. money, you can, you can pull that out. Um, but it, obviously, if you pull it out, then you stop getting your 3% cash back. So my idea is to keep building up that free crypto, keep building it up and building it up. And then eventually I'll get to the next level card where I get 5% cash back on all purchases. You know, yep. so why not? Because it's free, right? I may as well just let it build up and you can get rewards. You can earn interest on it while it's sitting there. So yep. you know, as I say, like, because a, a normal card where you get, say, frequent flyer miles might cost you $500 in application fee and it might cost you $100 in an annual fee and that money's gone. Whereas if you have to pay two or $3,000 to get this card, but then when you cancel the card, you get the two or $3,000 back. It's pretty simple. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm contemplating this scenario versus getting an entry level card yep. that cost me less there and invest that money into 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 other crypto that's yeah. I believe more in, let's say. Yeah. You know, let's say Bitcoin versus to um, of course when everybody watches uh, this video, everybody's gonna go out and apply for the CRO card and of course everybody starts buying it, that coin's gonna go through the roof. So probably knows? more than any other. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Um, I, I think it's it's a great product to have because it really brings crypto into the real world. Because um, I yeah. can that that was always a big thing. Yeah, Bitcoin's great, um, and I can send Bitcoin to you in Japan or to Muliani in Russia or whatever. 
but I couldn't go and buy my groceries with it. But now with the crypto card, you can literally spend Bitcoin or you can spend cash in your local currency anywhere in the world. So I, I believe that's an entry level product that a lot of people are going to want to get into, particularly because not, yeah. not just the Visa card, they can also have term deposits on there and they can earn interest on their Bitcoin as well. So it's, it's kind of like a little miniature Bitcoin bank, you know, crypto bank, also a world currency mm -hmm. bank in your pocket. And once people find out about that, there will literally be millions of people filing into it. Who doesn't want to get free mm. cash back every time you go shopping? Yeah. yeah. So, or who doesn't want to Makes never sense. pay for Spotify and never pay for Netflix ever again? Like, how great is that? That, that to me, like mm. when I, I, I first put up like the two grand, I said, I, I put up two grand, I save $30 a month, $360 a year. And within a couple of years, the card's paid for itself just in the savings on those two services. Apart from the fact that every time I go shopping, you know, I've now made over $1,000 in cash back in free crypto, plus the crypto has gone up, plus I've earned interest on the crypto. So it doesn't take long to pay for itself. Yep. Sweet. Super. I love the company. I Thanks. love the company. I'd, I'd, I'd wear their t-shirt if they gave me a t-shirt. <laughs> I would do free <laughs> advertising for them because I think they're awesome. <laughs> uh, very cool. You're already doing free advertising for them by the sounds of it. Yeah, yeah, true. Just on this call for 30 minutes. But I would wear that T-shirt around all day. So, yeah, I love them. I, I love bringing out my card in public and just tapping it. And it's like it's a metal card. And people go, oh, you've got a metal card, not a plastic card. And I say, sit down. Let me tell you about crypto. <laughs> Let me convert you to the cult of crypto. <laughs> Uh, all right, so 727, who's got a question? We've got three minutes, no pressure. Oh, Daddy, you've got a question. <laughs> Can't hear you. His, his question is, when do I get fed? <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. It's all fine to talk about crypto and investments, but when do we mm. feed the puppies? Yes, yes. Uh, no other questions from you, Andre? Um, You're cool? Not at this stage, yeah. Okay. Good. Sweet, sweet. Has, okay. has, the, has the crypto market gone over a trillion dollars yet? Do we uh, know? Like into market cap? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That happened weeks and weeks and weeks ago. You don't read the newspapers anymore. Um, I mean, Bitcoin itself is now like the number four or number five currency in the world. Like the biggest <laughs> currency is the US dollar followed by the Chinese yuan. And then I think it's the Japanese yen is next and then Bitcoin. So, you know, I mean, obviously the price has, has gone up, but there's a lot more users now than what there was two, three, four years ago. So... Yeah, it's becoming much more mm. widespread, which is which is great. That's what we want. We don't want just want the price thing up. We want it to actually people to be using this thing. Andre's waving around saying, I've got a question. I've got a question. <laughs> yes. Uh, in terms of news, what is the good news to watch, read? Is it channel, Reddit or Twitter? What, yeah. Or mixture, variety, everything? Um, there's a lot of shit out there. That's the problem. Um, there's okay. a lot of lies. There's a lot of crap. Um, people used to follow um, John McAfee on Twitter because he'd say, you know, I'm, I'm beyond all this. I made all my money out of antivirus software in the 80s. I got paid $100 million. I'm, you know, I'm fine. Um, and now he's being charged with money laundering and um, securities fraud and all this sort of stuff because he would go out to the marketplace and buy a couple of million dollars worth of some worthless coin. Then he would tweet to all of his people saying, this thing's gonna go great. And when it went up, he would sell all of his stuff. Or he would, he would recommend a coin, but he wouldn't actually tell people that he was secretly being paid millions of dollars to recommend the coin. Um, so there's, there's so much crap, there's so many people that you can't trust. Um, mm -hmm. There's maybe one or two YouTube channels out of several thousand that I would actually listen to. Um, Nuggets News would be one that I would actually listen to. 
um, on YouTube, otherwise cointelegraph.com because um, they're basically like a news gathering service and like a, a world newspaper, but it's specifically as related to crypto. So they'll talk about, you know, Biden's stimulus plan, what effect that'll have on Bitcoin. You know, what's going on in the UK, what effect that'll have on the Ethereum market and that, and that sort of stuff. A coin Telegraph is great because it's researched and done by you know, regulation journalists. Um, and if they do actually hold crypto themselves, they'll say down the bottom of the article, by the way, I also own Ethereum. So you know they're a little bit biased, but they're not being paid to, to give you the information or give you misinformation, which a lot of them are. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, sadly, there's not a lot of really, really good information out there. Um, there's because it's the wild west; it's not regulated. There's a lot of people who are saying That's a lot it, of things, yeah. and you really can't trust them because they've usually got a a very good reason for telling you what they want you to believe, so they can make money off of you. But um, yeah. Yeah, at the end of the day, it might take a couple of years, but sooner or later, those chickens come home to roost. And you know, with with McAfee, you know, not not only has he been paid to say things, and he didn't disclose that. Um, but also he didn't disclose that he was paid at all. So they're after him for tax now on the millions and millions of dollars that he got paid because he never disclosed that he actually got paid to begin with. So, yeah, he's probably going to go to prison for the rest of his life. And, uh, you know, not number one for lying, number two for tax fraud, and number three for, I don't know what you could charge him, but he was, there was a documentary that he even wrote the documentary. He, admitted that he might have murdered his next door neighbour, but he wasn't really telling. Anyway, so yeah, Cointelegraph, Nuggets News, obviously go to Quillionaire. Uh, we will absolutely tell you our biases. We're completely biased because we actually use the services. We own the coins. Um, and that's a free service that we give away for free because we make money off of Boston Coin. So once a week, we're probably going to mention Boston Coin and say, hey, here's all the stuff. Learn about how to do your own crypto. But if you just say, screw this shit, I'm too busy, I don't have time for this, then buy Boston Coin. And we'll absolutely tell you that's why we're telling you that, because we've got a vested interest in it. We're not going to lie. It's all good. Uh, I mean, I've, I've been in the financial game for almost 30 years. Um, and I mean, I don't lie to my customers because otherwise I wouldn't be able to be in the game for 30 years. And people know me. They know where I live. They find me online. You know, my Facebook has been set to public for, shit, 14 years now. <laughs> yeah, that's how long I've been on Facebook. Um, yeah, so I've, I've got nothing to hide. And I'm open and honest that I do have bias, as we all have bias. But I'm going to tell you which bias I have. So mm. easy peasy. All right, we've run sure. a little bit over time. Any other questions, please shoot me an email, set up an appointment in my calendar, call me, fax me, tweet me, whatever. All good? Everybody happy? Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm, I'm not sure if we're going to do one next week. I've got a few things that are sort of starting to take up my time. If there's a lot of demand, if nine of your friends come on and say, please, please, please do one, then I'll take time out. Otherwise, this might be our last one for a while. So... I'll put the pressure back on you guys. All right. Sounds good. Thanks Might for the information. Might see you next week. Might see you in a month. All right. Chat soon. All right. Thanks, Jamie. Bye. Peace. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.